Hello guys, welcome to this new machine learning tutorial. In today's video, we are going to talk about evaluation metrics for supervised learning. By definition, metrics are measures used in machine learning to evaluate the performance of a model by comparing the predicted values with the actual values given in the data set. In supervised learning, we have mainly two types of evaluation metrics. We have the regression metrics and the classification metrics. In practice, for regression metrics, we use mainly four types. We have the mean absolute error, the mean squared error, and the root mean squared error, mean squared logarithmic error, and the coefficient of determination. So here we have some notes about the things that we are going to use in this video. We have capital N, which is the number of samples, Y, which is the true value from the data set, Y hat is the predicted value by the model, Y bar is the mean of the actual values, and we have the difference between the true value and the predicted value, which is defined as a residual. We start by the mean absolute error. The mean absolute error is the sum of the absolute value of the residuals divided by the number of samples. It measures the accuracy for the continuous variables. The lower the value of mean absolute error, the better is the model. And its range is from 0 to infinity. As you can see here, we can use scikit-learn to import the mean absolute error and use it directly to compare our predicted value with the true value given in the data set. Then we have the mean squared error. The mean squared error is the sum of the square of the residuals divided by the number of samples. The root mean squared error is simply the square root of the mean squared error. These two metrics are more useful if we want to make a comparison between different regression models. They are more efficient than the mean absolute error for penalizing large prediction errors. And as you can see here also, we can use scikit-learn to import the mean squared error and to calculate the error between the predicted value and the true value. If we want the root mean squared error, we simply use square root of the mean squared error and we get our result. Then we have the mean squared logarithmic error. As you can see here in this formula, we use logarithmic to calculate our error. It is more useful when we do not want to penalize large prediction errors. And this formula is also available in scikit-learn by importing the mean squared log error and to calculate our error between the predicted value and the true value. We have also the coefficient of determination generally used to evaluate the performance of one model. Because as you can see here, coefficient of determination is always between zero and one. The metrics that we have seen before the coefficient of determination have a range from 0 to infinity. So the difference between the coefficient of determination and the three different metrics that we have seen is that for mean square error, mean absolute error, and mean squared logarithmic error, the lower the value, the better is the model. But in the coefficient of determination, we have the more the value is closer to 1, the better is the model. Now we have the classification metrics. We have the accuracy, the record, specificity, precision, F1 score, log loss, checkout and index, receiver operating curve, all these metrics are used depending on the use case. We have this confusion matrix for binary classifier, which helps us to count the errors occurring on the training and validation data sets. These four outcomes of the classifier will help us to calculate the remaining evaluation matrix. So to read this confusion matrix, we are going to proceed as the following. We have if the predicted value is zero, which means that we predict a negative value, and if the actual value is zero, then we have a true negative. So we have the predicted value is negative and it is true because the actual is zero. Whereas if the predicted value is negative, which means that equals to zero, and the actual value is 1, here we have a false. So the answer is false, which means that we predicted a negative value, but we have a positive value. So we have the false negative. But if we predict 1, which is positive, and the actual value is zero, so we have false, a false positive. And finally, if we have predicted one and the actual value is one, so we have prediction is positive and the answer is true. So we have the true positive. Or the classification matrix will depend on these four outcomes. We start by the accuracy. Accuracy is the fraction of observations that are correctly protected, valid for balanced classes. We will see later on if we have unbalanced class distribution, we are going to use another metric. So the accuracy mainly will give us the correct answers. As we have said, it is the true negative 
plus the true positive over the sum of all the outcomes, which are the true negative plus the false negative plus the true positive plus the false positive. We can use scikit-learn directly if we want to calculate the accuracy by importing the accuracy score. And we use it to compare the true value and the predicted value. Then we have a recall which will give us the true positive divided by the false negative plus the true positive. So it is the ability of the classifier to predict all the positive samples from all observations being actually positive, which means that for a true value equals to one. It is different from accuracy because we are going to proceed with only one part of the observations. And we can also use scikit-learn to import the recall score and to make our comparison between the true values and the predicted values. So we have the specificity. Specificity equals to the true negative over the true negative plus the false positive. And it is the ability of the classifier to predict all the negative samples from all the observations being actually negative. So we have y equals to zero and you want to know the fraction of y hat equals to zero, given y equals to zero. So we don't have the formula of the specificity directly on scikit-learn, but what we can do is that we can import the confusion matrix, and from the confusion matrix, we get our four outcomes, which are the true negative, false positive, false negative, and the true positive, and we implement our formula as the following. So we have specificity equals to the true negative over the false positive plus the true negative. Then we have precision. Precision is the ability of the classifier to separate positive and negative examples in positive predictions. So for the recall and the specificity, we had y equals to zero or y equals to one. Then we calculate the fraction of y hat. But here it is the reverse. We have y hat equals to one and we want to know the ability of our classifier to separate this positive and the negative examples. So precision is calculated as the following. It is the true positive over the true positive plus the false positive. We can also use scikit-learn to import precision score and use it to compare our true values with our predicted values. Then we have the Jacquard index, which is defined as the intersection of the predicted values and the actual values divided by the size of the union of these two sets. So if our classifier will not predict correctly any value, automatically Jacquard index will be equals to zero. Because if you have the intersection equals to zero, then automatically our metric equals to zero. It is also available on scikit-learn by importing the Jacquard score as the following. We have the log loss, which is the best classification matrix when dealing with probabilities. So the smaller is the value, the better is the prediction. As you can see here in this formula, we have P as the probability of the true value which equals to one. It is also available on scikit-learn by importing log loss as the following. Now we have one of the complementary metrics, which is F1 score. F1 score is the weighted average of precision and recall, which is always between zero and one. So it is equal to two times recall times precision divided by the sum of the recall and the precision. It is also available on scikit-learn by importing F1 score as the following. Now, if we do have unbalanced class distributions, which means that, for example, if we have 500 samples and we have 15 that are or 20 that are positive and the remaining are negative, here we have unbalanced class distribution because by default we have a threshold of 0.5 for logistic regression. The technique is that we have to move our threshold to find the optimal threshold. And the solution for that is the receiver operating curve. The receiving operating curve is a plot of the false positive rate on the x-axis versus the true positive rate on the y-axis for a number of different threshold values between 0 and 1. So the true positive rate is also known as the recall, and the false positive rate is known as 1 minus sensitivity. So if we do comparison between ROC and F1 score, we have F1 score is a relationship between recall and precision, but in the ROC, we have a relationship between recall and sensitivity. So ROC gives us the opportunity to compare different models globally using metrics area under curve. So we calculate the area which is under the blue curve, which is defined as this integral from zero to one of the ROC, and it measures the entire two-dimensional area under the entire rock curve. It is very useful to compare between different models. So this is all for the matrix. I hope that you have learned new things. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.